On today's BRS TV Investigates, it's the first update of our elevated alkalinity calcium and magnesium experiment set up in two reef tanks like you'd have in your own home. Hi guys, Randy here with BRS TV Investigates where we take popular reefing theories and put them to the test and today we're checking in on our experiment of growing corals two to three times faster in our side-by-side -side Red Sea Max E170 tanks with one tank running at common levels for alkalinity and calcium and the other tank at significantly higher levels Let's find out if it's working. So it's been about four months since we got these two tanks up and running with similar aquascapes and identical corals with very similar coral placement. And today we're going to check in on each tank's progress with a side-by-side -side comparison of each coral along with some general observations. Before we get too far in today's update, we definitely need to give a huge shout out to Neptune, Ecotech, and WWC who have each sponsored these experiments from the get-go with Apex controllers and dose dosing pumps, radions and Vortec pumps, and of course, a mountain of corals to experiment on. Along with these three sponsors, Red Sea stepped up and joined in with their donation of these Max E170 45 gallon tank and stand combos. Not only just the two for this experiment, but in fact, a dozen of them in total for all of the various experiments that we have planned here in this BRS testing lab space. So kudos to them as well. Getting right into it, there's been an ongoing discussion over the topic of what levels for alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium are the most ideal for coral growth, with the general idea being that elevated levels will produce increased growth. More or less, the thought process is that the more available alkalinity and calcium in the water, the faster the coral can use them to build skeletal structure, since the overabundance would allow the coral to use less energy to uptake them. In part two of our elevated elements testing, we saw a pretty significant increase in growth from our control group to our elevated parameters experiment group, actually in the 70% range. So we thought it'd be worthwhile to try to replicate those results in an environment that more closely resembles something like reefers would have in their own homes. Meaning if the increased growth we found in the lab testing environment can be easily replicated in an average reef tank, for those experienced reefers who are looking to go from a tank full of frags to a tank full of colonies in far less time, this approach to controlling alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium parameters at higher levels may be one of the easiest ways to get there. All right, so here's how we've got this experiment set up and running so far. We used two of the Red Sea Max E170 tanks, aquascaped semi the same, with about 25 to 30 pounds of Reef Saver rock. Each tank has a single Radeon XR30 with diffuser and mounted with the RMS arm kit, and two MP10 Vortec powerheads set to 100% Reef Crass mode. There's also a Neptune Apex for each with two dose dosers, ones for small percentage continuous water changes to manage nutrient export and trace element replenishment, and the other for dosing two part solutions of calcium chloride and sodium bicarbonate, sodium bicarb to reduce the pH as a variable. And finally, each tank has the same 25 corals from WWC, ranging from Acros and other SPS to LPS like Euphelia and Acans, all of which we'll try to do our best to identify during the side-by-side -side comparisons. The tank parameters for alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium are being controlled with two-part dosing to maintain stable parameters of 8 dKH, 430 calcium, and 1280 magnesium. That's in the lower range tank, which are closer to more typical ranges that reefers aim for, and 12 dKH, 465 calcium, and 1390 magnesium in the elevated tank. Okay, so it's been right at about four months since we started adding corals and adjusting the parameters. At first glance, when walking up to the tanks, by looking at the coralline algae alone, I'd almost assume that the tank on the right was the elevated parameter system because it looks to have a ton of encrusted algae that nearly fills up the entire ABS bare bottom tank. However, when we take a step back and look at the corals overall, you start to see differences in the corals themselves. Rather than bore you with the play-by-play -play of each coral, I'll let you decide the differences for yourselves with these side-by-side -side comparison shots, and then afterwards, share with you some first impressions that stand out to me. What we're looking for here are signs of growth at the bases of the corals, differences in how much area it has encrusted over, as well as the thickness and the amount of branches, particularly on the SPS. <laughs> 
So I'm sure most of you noticed some pretty significant differences in quite a few of the corals you saw. Corals like the Hydnophora and Samacoras show seemingly faster growth as they are a bit larger and more encrusted in the elevated tank versus the other. And to me, there look to be a few more heads on corals like the Acans in the Duncan. Most notably to me for sure are the acros in the elevated parameter tank that show more substantial growth at the bases where they have encrusted well beyond the frag plugs onto the rockwork, as well as those that have thicker mass and longer, more numerous branches. The green slimer in particular is very noticeable in the amount of growth over the lower parameter tank, as well as the extensive base on that leprechaun hydnophora and the longer branching on the green and blue acro. Although there were at least two coral mortalities in the lower parameter tank, it's tough to say that it was a direct causation from the different parameters, but it is notable. All in all, I'd say that a majority of the corals overall are showing similar increased growth rates like we saw in our initial lab testing of the first experiment. What is also evident here are the differences in alkalinity consumption between the two tanks, where in the last two months, there's been an average of 8.74 mils per day of sodium bicarbonate alkalinity consumption in the lower parameter tank, while in those same two months, there's been an average alkalinity consumption of 61.06 mils per day in the elevated tank which works out to be a 598% more sodium bicarb requirement to maintain stable alkalinity from one over the other. I think it's plain to see here how the combined results from our lab environment testing and reef tank environment testing begin to show what is possible if you start to venture out of the norm and dip your toes into some of the outer edges of what's considered most common, especially when attempting to gain an edge in coral growth. From an alkalinity standpoint, there definitely seems to be measurable benefits in raising levels to what some would consider to be on the far end of normal parameters. That said, attempting to ride that edge safely is probably not for everyone, as it doesn't leave much room for error should something like an overdose happen to the tank. So I'd encourage those who are thinking about running over to their tanks and cranking up their dosage to either do so smartly or not at all. Stability is ultimately going to be the key to longer term success and stability means making as little change as possible. However, if you are a pioneer and you just have to try something like this on your own, I suggest doing so very slowly, like raising a single DKH point per month until you get to your target. Just think, if you can combine the results from the elevated parameter testing that we saw here today with some of the results we saw in our high and low pH testing that Ryan recently wrapped up, just how different can we approach optimizing coral growth in our own reef tanks at home? You know, I think when we're all said and done, we'll have one final experiment that puts all of these results to the test and see if running something like a finely tuned reef tank is not only feasible, but sustainable. And in Ryan's words in this video, if the juice is worth the squeeze. See you next time on BRS TV Investigates.